Okay, guys, it's at Jamezy. I'm right back. Um, so I want to talk about the post-draft part of, um, you know, the 2009 NFL draft. So I think a lot of us were surprised that really, like, for the last six, seven months, you know, after the season and and every like that. Plus, during the season, scouting some of these college guys, I think we all had our names, like the names like uh, A.J. Green, Patrick Peterson, you know, maybe Cam Newton, Blaine Gabbard, uh, Marcel Darius, Nick Fairley. You know, we had those kind of guys tuned in, so we were pretty sure that uh, the Browns were going to take one of those guys, or maybe a couple other guys that were kind of outside, but that we heard of. So then we hear Phil Taylor, you know. But you know, first off, I want to talk about that, that trade the Atlanta Falcons. When the minute that Patrick Peterson went off the board, I was screaming from the top of my lungs. I'm like, Browns, trade out that pick, please. Do not stay at that number six. But like, everyone that we wanted was pretty much gone. Patrick Peterson, gone. Darius, gone. You know, uh, I'm probably one of the eyeballs actually kind of like Newton, gone. Green, gone. Julio Jones, I've never really got into him. Um, he's a great receiver, but um, I think number six is kind of high to take the second best receiver in the draft. I can kind of see where Atlanta's coming from. You know, they want a guy to go with Rodney White. They're all the way down at number 27. But um, they gave us an offer that we just couldn't refuse. I, 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 I salute the Browns for that trade. You got to, I don't know, you know, any Browns fan out there, you got to salute them for that. I mean, next year, our first round draft pick. Now, I do hope that uh, the Atlanta Falcons have a horrible season. I mean, I hope that uh, Matt Ryan throws like 40 interceptions, and and and, and so I hope bad things for them. I hope that they, they lose a lot of games because you know we can have an earlier pick. You know, depending on how our season goes, we can have we have a good solid season, maybe a nine and seven, ten and six type season, or we can have another another downer type year. You know, with a lot of rookies we got coming in, and and I, we have some holes still to fill to this day. But um, so I, I thought that was smart. I thought that was a good idea. That was an offer we couldn't refuse. Because when we first traded, I'm like, we better have gotten the next year's first. And that's what we did. Plus, we got the extra second that we used to get Greg Little from North Carolina. Actually, I have no complaints when I trade. We flawless. Salute to the Browns. Flawless. Um, that's what we had to do. Um, so, then we trade down to number 27. And I think we trade up to number 21. 22, 21. Not sure. I have to look it up later. But 21, 22. So, you know, I'm thinking Cameron Jordan from the, the defensive end from California, Berkeley. Now, I know he doesn't really fit our system, because I would always consider him more of a 3-4 type guy. I always thought he fit more of a 3-4, and apparently that's what the Browns thought, too. He, he wasn't going to fit in our 4-3. But, you know, I'm still thinking, like, you know what? Hey, maybe we're trading up for Cameron Jordan, and we're going to try to see if we can make it work. You know, have a lot of talent, see what happened. But we didn't go there well. We went Phil Taylor from Baylor. So, at first, I think, like, a lot of, I think a lot of us were pretty upset about that. Uh, I just did not see that one coming. I did not, you know. I'm like, I'm like you know, I'll tell you all, like on a lot of defensive tackles in this draft, the Nick Farrelly's. I mean, the, the Marcel Dale. I mean, I still have a lot of defensive tackles. Somehow his name kind of slipped past me. Um, but I'm guessing that the Chiefs really were taking away. I looked at some um, articles that the Chiefs actually won them in that at that pick, but they traded out with us. Gave away our third switch picks, you know, whatever. But um. You know, Phil Taylor, you know, so first I'm kind of upset. I'm like, ah, oh, that's kind of a, a letdown. It's not the name I was looking for. I thought that maybe he could have been a second round pick. But it does turn out that the Chiefs were looking at him. We're not sure they were going to draft him or not, but they did have him on their mind. So, you know, if we let him go, who would have taken taken number 27? I have no idea. But, um, so, you know, first I'm upset. But then I figured out, so I think it more. We do have, you know, the, the, the NFL is a passing league now. It's, it's definitely a passing league now. Uh, we do have to stop the run. There was a lot of times last year where teams were pounded up the middle on us on fourth and one, you know, third and two, you know, stuff like that. You, you can't let yourself get beat down the middle like that. You know, we already have Ruben there. You know, now you add Big Phil Taylor, 360 pounds, 340 pound guy, just to plug up in. That's what he said. He's there to plug up the middle. Attract double teams. You cannot block him with one man. You're going to attract double teams. While that happening, he's going to free up the Marcus Bernards. He's going to free up the, uh, the Rubens. He's going to free up the Jabal Shears. You know, he's going to free up those guys and, and our linebackers just to get around. So that's why he's there. You know, to close that middle to make sure that teams like the Steelers, who have Rashard Mendenhall, uh, the Bengals, who the heck do they even have right now? I forgot. Uh, let me see. Um, the Ravens. You know, they have a great running back with Ray Rice. Uh, so, to, to make sure we clog the middle, make sure they can't run on us. 
Now this is when I started getting excited. You know, first of all, you know, it was a good pick. It was a it was a nice blue ball check type of pick. Not a flashy name, but in the end, he's gonna be he's probably about the most reliable one of the most reliable picks in this draft that will definitely translate to the NFL. Or his foot problems are okay and everything like that. Jamal Shear, this one draft is fun. Jamal Shear. That guy can rush the passer. That guy can get him on the corner. Then when you have Phil Taylor in the middle like that, I mean, he's definitely going to get him on the corner. He's a guy that's going to pass rush, that can contain the outside, runs a 4-6 at his size. You know, he's going to be, that guy is definitely a good pick. I mean, he was a guy that people were talking about being a late first round, middle first round pick, and now we got him in the, in the early second round. That's not bad. It's not a bad deal at all. So, you know, you got to you know, really appreciate that pick. Um, the pick I really, another pick I really, really like, Greg Little from North Carolina. Great pick. He didn't play last year, kind of like how Dan Bryant did. You know, he didn't play last year. He was suspended and everything like that. But, um, great pick. I got to stretch the field. You know, might be the best receiver after uh, A.J. Green. You know, he's got good hands, probably one of the best set of hands in the draft. Um, he's got that translates to the West Coast offense perfectly. Uh, you know, North Carolina, he was very versatile. They used him as a running back, quarterback. They used him on defense. They used him on pretty much everything they had to do. So he's a guy that can really, really help us out, and I think can be a starter this year. Of course, you know, receivers usually take about a year to get really ready, but he's a guy that can really, really help us out. You know, and it costs us less money than A.J. Green. So, you know, I'm not saying I didn't like A.J. Green. I definitely won the A.J. Green, but, you know, you gotta, you got to be happy with that. Um, let's see. Then, you know, we got the guys like Buster Scrum, the uh, cornerback from uh, Tennessee Chattanooga in one of the later rounds. He's got it ran. He ran. He got clocked at a 4-2 at one point in college. At the combine, yes, he did run a 4-3, but he ran a 4-2. So he's one of those guys that even if he doesn't become a lockdown corner, maybe he can do punt returns. You know, he can you know, be a gunner on special teams. And he's a guy, I saw his highlights, he can, he can hit. Um, so he's definitely a guy that can probably help us out a lot. Uh, let's see who else do we have here. You know, the, the one pick I was kind of, I'm kind of still on offensive. I still do not understand it was the fullback pick. I don't really understand that we have the best blocking fullback in the NFL, Lawrence Vickers. Yes, he's not the best receiver. You know, everybody's like, okay, well, you need a, a passing fullback. I mean, a receiving full, uh, fullback in the um, in the West Coast offense. But not necessarily. You look at Pat Shermer's offense last year, the fullback had four catches. I mean, Lawrence Vickers, he doesn't really catch a lot of passes, but he, for the most part, catches them when we do throw him the ball. I mean, he had two touchdowns against the Steelers receiving touchdowns. So, um... I really don't understand, unless this guy is really just as good of a blocker as Lawrence Vickers, I really don't understand that pick. Then the other pick was the, the tight end from um, USC, I think. You know, I guess we got him because he's really, really athletic and uh, really athletic kind of guy. He's raw. Uh, I'm not really excited about that pick yet. Um, you know, I do think we need another tight end. You know, we have Ben Watson and Evan Moore, but you can never go wrong with having too many tight ends. But I think DJ Williams was a guy we could have taken a look at. Um, but you know, obviously they see something that I don't, you know, so I, I really can't, you know, pay too much on that. Um, but yeah, we had some solid picks in this draft. Uh, I'm not going to say it's better than last year's, but I will say this. Last year, when we heard TJ Ward drafted over that USC safety, we're like, what the heck is going on? So I got TJ Ward. Is definitely going to be a pro bowl even this year or within the next few years. TJ Ward is going to be a pro bowler. Unfortunately, he's in a tough division where you got Palomalu and, and Ed Reed. So he has a, a minute to go before he can get on that status. But he was definitely locking down, you know, patrolling out there. Um, you see, you know, I, I, I so badly wanted Patrick Peterson. So I still do because I think he would have been so great next to Joe Hayden. Especially now that we have a great defensive line. But then again, you know, Phil Taylor is part of that defensive line, and we got him in the first round. So if we were taking Patrick Peterson, there was no Phil Taylor, unless he slid to the second. But uh, that's a whole other story. But uh, overall, I would give this this draft a B. I can't give it. I can't give it an A, just because I don't like that fullback pick, and I really don't like the tight end pick that much. I'm not a fan of those picks at all, for the most part. Uh, oh, yeah, another one. Yeah, we got that uh, the corner from uh, or safety from Nebraska, I think, in the seventh round. Um, they say he's kind of a guy to keep the, the system simple for, but uh, we keep looking out for him. But, you know, remember, guys, these later round picks generally get cut. You know, remember Larry Asante last year, the Paul Hubbards, the, the day, you know, uh, a lot of guys, the Marula Purcells and Chase Pittmans, they usually get cut for the most part. But um, go Browns, let's hope for a good season. Hopefully the NFL comes back. Peace.